MMA is a grueling sport, with fighters facing several hardships on their road to greatness. But those pale in comparison to the fighters with physical and cognitive disabilities. Today, we look at fighters who've battled life-altering impairments, but still managed to find success in the octagon. Welcome to the INC, and these are five disabled MMA fighters. Nick Newell has long been the poster child for disabled fighters. Newell was born with a congenital amputation of his left arm, a muscular stump of his forearm which he learned from a young age to grasp objects with. Inspired by one-arm pitcher Jim Abbott, Newell began pursuing a career in sports, racking over 300 wins as a high school and college wrestler before transitioning to MMA in 2009. Newell admitted he found getting fights difficult early in his career as many of his opponents didn't want the shame of losing to a one-armed fighter or the potential backlash that would have come from beating him. Despite this, Newell amassed a 9-0 record in small promotions in New Hampshire and Massachusetts before being signed by the World Series of Fighting in 2013. Newell managed to handle the jump in quality, as wins over Keon Caldwell and Sabah Fadai earned him a lightweight title shot against Justin Gaethje holding his own in the competitive first round before succumbing to the champion strikes by the end of the second. After a three-year retirement, Newell returned to MMA in 2018, and despite coming up short on Dana White's Contender Series, his performance soon earned him a contract with Bellator. A first-round submission of Corey Browning saw him bring his record to 16 wins and three losses. Matt Hamill's story was so inspiring, they even made a movie about it. Deaf since birth, Hamill was first drawn to wrestling by his stepfather, who worked as a high school wrestling coach in Rochester. An acclaimed grappling career would soon follow, culminating in Hamill winning a gold medal at the IOC-sanctioned Deaf Olympics in 2001. Hamill's achievements soon attracted the attention of the Ultimate Fighter, and while he subsequently withdrew from the show through injury, he did enough to earn himself a contract with the UFC. Hamill would enjoy a six-year tenure with the promotion and squaring off against some of the sport's all-time greats, with pay-per-view headliners against Quinton Rampage Jackson and a decision over MMA legend Tito Ortiz. By the time he left the UFC, Hamill had developed his striking to match his already elite wrestling. Hamill's most infamous match came in 2009 against unbeaten prospect John Jones. Jones seemingly won the fight with a succession of elbows in the first round, only for our friendly neighborhood controversial referee Steve Mazzagatti to reverse the decision and reward Hamill the win by disqualification. At the time of writing, Hamill holds the distinction of being the only man to hold a win over the former light heavyweight champion. Hamill retired in 2018, having amassed a 13 and 8 record. His legacy confirmed with the release of a biographical film chronicling his road to the octagon. Michael Bisping's disability was hidden in plain sight for many years. In January 2013, Bisping took on Vitor Belfort in the main event of Fight Night Sao Paulo. The fight came during Vitor's TRT resurgence, which saw him obliterate some of the UFC's top middleweight contenders in a succession of spectacular knockouts. And unfortunately for Bisping, he'd be no exception. There it is again, that left high kick, and Bisping has opened up and in all sorts of trouble, that'll do it! Bisping suffered a detached retina following the kick, forcing a lengthy exodus to recover from surgery and sparking a feud between the two men that remains to this day. Most believe the damage Bisping sustained in the knockout was superficial, until the British fighter revealed its true impact in an episode of his podcast. Check this out. Look at this, baby boys. Oh! You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's why I used to wear fucking sunglasses, baby boy. Bisping detailed the injury further in his autobiography, claiming his eyesight was so poor he barely passed the pre-fight medicals requiring 20 over 200 vision, meaning he fought the remainder of his career despite being clinically blind in his right eye. Bisping was forced to utilize a new fighting style to adapt to his poor depth perception. 
embarking on a late career turnaround that culminated in 2016 when he beat Luke Rockhold to win the UFC middleweight title. Bisping wasn't the only fighter to have issues with his eyesight. Alan Belcher suffered a similar injury in 2010 before enjoying a successful tenure with the UFC, which made Bisping's actions all the more ironic when the two men fought at UFC 159. Oh no! Trey Teligman was one of the most distinctive fighters from MMA's early years. As a child, Teligman was involved in a traffic accident that severely damaged his abdomen, forcing doctors to remove his right lung and leaving a deep recess in his chest that remains to this day. Although the damage affected his breathing, Teligman began pursuing a career in fighting, training in karate and kickboxing from the age of 8, and becoming one of the first pupils of Ken Shamrock's infamous Lion Den Stable. Teligman was MMA's first real spoiler. Organizations repeatedly brought him in as a warm body, only to experience surprising results. In 1996, Teligman surprised many by winning the Super Brawl heavyweight tournament in Hawaii and later submitting heavyweight prospect Brad Kohler at UFC Japan. Teligman's greatest moment came in 2001 against MMA legend Igor Vovchanchian who'd lost just one of his past 40 fights and was regarded as the number one heavyweight in the world. Igor was expected to make easy work of the short-notice Teligman, but a combination of boxing and a strong takedown game saw the Texan claim one of the biggest upsets in Pride's history. Unbelievable! Oh my god, what a Trey Teligman has beaten Igor Volchanson on a unanimous decision. Teligman retired in 2005 after a brutal knockout loss to Tim Sylvia. The severity of the knockout, added with Teligman's retirement from public life, led some to suggest Teligman had been killed and the death covered up by Zufa. An allegedly still living Teligman was last seen working for Chuck Norris's World Combat League, boasting an MMA record of 7 wins and 5 losses. Natias Frederick was already a novelty in MMA. The British fighter only made his amateur debut at 30 before turning pro two years later. But his road to even reaching that stage faced more hurdles than most. Frederick has battled neurological issues his entire life, including dyslexia, illiteracy, speech problems, and autism, making it hard for him to perform even the most basic of tasks. Frederick was the target of bullying due to his impairments, and that led him to taking up MMA in self-defense, training at the Renegade Gym in his hometown of Birmingham, and later serving as a sparring partner for UFC light heavyweight Alexander Rakic. After losing his first two fights, Frederick went on a 10-fight unbeaten tear through the British regional scene, winning over critics with his level of performance and brutal one-shot knockout power. Frederick's career reached its high point in 2019, when victory over James Webb saw him win the Cage Warriors middleweight title and confirm his place as one of the sport's great feel-good stories. And now, time for a few honorable mentions. Isaac the Shermanator Marquez was allowed to train at Jackson Wink, who made his dream come true against UFC legend Diego Sanchez. One Championship's Amir Khan became a welterweight title challenger despite a lifelong battle with Tourette's Syndrome. Every fighter ends up blind after facing John Jones. Hold on, he got poked, he got poked. Oh no. This is the INC, and thank you for watching.